On October 24, 1966, Wisconsin State University at La Crosse opened a brand new Hall of Science. It was filled with high-tech features and equipment of the day. A library, museum, and planetarium. A new audio tutorial method of instruction. AV support equipment including overhead projectors. And a brand new analog computer. It was a half century ago. And it was a very different world of science and science education. So there's been a lot of research on uh, in, in scholarship of teaching and learning about uh, the best ways to teach students and, and the best way that the students will learn the material. And the old-fashioned lecture, write down notes, take an exam, they'll, they'll learn it well enough to get through the exam, but they won't remember it for very long. Today, we have moved away from teaching science by showing to teaching science by doing, a hands-on, minds-on approach. When I came on, uh, there were a handful of people pretty active in research in different departments, but it's definitely picked up in the last two decades. It's pretty much an expectation now of all the new faculty members they come in that they're going to be expected to develop a program and keep it going. My faculty ment uh, mentor is uh, Dr. Nidhi Mishra. We, uh, we've been a lot of places together. Here's one of them. We are flying the drone to map the quarry. We went to Nepal in May in order to map the vegetation at the tree line. As the role of faculty has expanded to include research mentorship, the way they teach in the classroom is also transforming. In UWL science classrooms, students are actively learning, solving complex research questions, applying knowledge, using critical thinking, and interacting with one another. I want my students to be the ones that are actively doing, and to me that means working in pods, having the latest technology. They're the ones that are teaching the entire classroom about what they've learned. These kinds of practical, hands-on experiences gained through research and teaching are what employers tell UWL faculty and staff they expect in their future workforce. And that workforce is growing. UWL offers programs in areas that are projected to experience up to 37% increase during the next eight years. UWL student enrollment has expanded to accommodate this growth. Over the last 50 years, enrollment has more than doubled, with much of that growth in the College of Science and Health. When Collie Hall opened, 56 instructional faculty members worked in the college. Today, there's nearly 150. In that same time, most departments in the college have nearly tripled in size. Biology, UWL's most popular major, quadrupled in size in the last 20 years, with over 1,200 declared majors this fall. Our college is the largest on campus in terms of uh, student enrollments, and we haven't really been actively re recruiting them. The students are just coming here because I think of the quality of the programs. Three departments within the college have earned the UW System Regents Teaching Excellence Awards. Two professors in the college have been named Wisconsin Professors of the Year. Faculty and staff have been awarded $11.1 million in external grant funding since 2010. The physics program graduates more students than any undergraduate physics program in the state and has become a model for undergraduate physics education nationwide. The college's graduates have a 98% job placement rate and have long maintained a more than 96% average pass rate on professional certification exams. Biochemistry student Gina Wade and two other UWL biochemistry students recently earned an award at a national conference for the presentation of their research. I research a protein called HPMA, it stands for homolysin A, and specifically what I do is I remove portions of this protein and I see if it still functions to break red blood cells. I think a lot of students learn more actually doing an experiment and seeing results and proving to themselves that a theory, you know, is supported, rather than just listening and hearing a professor tell them that something is true. UWL's growth, 
along with the evolution of how we teach and do research, created the intense need for a modern laboratory building. This fall, Prairie Spring Science Center opened, featuring 36 teaching and 23 research laboratories. In this new facility, UWL is preparing the next generation. However, phase two is needed. In the physics department, we teach a class that's a physical science class for future elementary and middle school teachers. It's meant to be very interactive and the students are supposed to work together in groups but there are a lot of structural issues. For example, in that classroom, the lab tables are really long and they're fixed to the ground, and so you can't move the tables around at all. And so the students are kind of sitting in rows when I want them to be working together in groups. The Prairie Spring Science Center does not include classrooms or faculty offices. Those are part of phase two. And so our ideas about how students learn and the best ways to teach them are shifting. And so I think that we need facilities that are going to support what faculty want to do in their classes. UWL's hands-on, minds-on approach to teaching was not envisioned when its new Hall of Science opened back in 1966. Building Phase 2 of the Prairie Springs Science Center will provide state-of-the-art classroom spaces that are critical to support the way we prepare our future workforce today. Just as Phase 1 of the Prairie Springs Science Center has begun the transformation, Phase 2 is needed to continue to improve science education at UWL.